Hey guys, what's up? It's JB Illusion. I would like to preface this episode um, of speculation with the fact that I could not believe how many pictures I got of the Warhammer 40k, you know, Inquisitors, as opposed to Fantasy Witch Hunters. That's kind of annoying. But then again, considering the fact that the actual Empire Witch Hunters don't even have a model, let alone an army, you know, I could kind of understand how one group would be a lot more useful than the other group. But hey, whatever. Alright, roll it! The Order of the Templars of Sigmar, universally known as the Witch Hunters, is an organization dedicated to the eradication of the heretics. Be they warlocks, witches, sorcerers, fortune tellers, necromancers, worshippers of the dark gods, deviants, mutants, blasphemers, sinners, utterers of profanities, servants of daemons, or composers of corrupting music. Yeah, that's what the... <laughs> witch hunters known in Warhammer Fantasy are all about. Basically, <clears throat> the witch hunters, it's their job to hunt down, well, you know, pretty much anyone who has anything to do with the Dark Gods, and I can understand that because, well, demons exist. Like, like legit. If somebody, you know, does something crazy, um, stabs one of their hated enemies, and chants praise cor corn, or cuts some dude's head off, and says praise corn and a blood letter shows up, well, half your city is about to die before that thing goes down. It's it's really scary. And I do understand why the witch hunters exist, and they're definitely people who are very, very fanatic in their belief of Sigmar and their beliefs in pretty much destroying, killing, maiming, setting on fire, you know, kill it with fire. Anything that has anything to do with chaos. And as you could tell, Mordheim, you know, kind of has a lot to do with chaos. And I mean a ton. In fact, who would send the witch hunters into this? I mean, you would assume that a bunch of witch hunters would say, Oh, that, that comet just fell. That was Sigma punishing them. Now let's go and stab stuff. Well, in fact, the Grand Theog Theonist... The Grand Theonist of Sigmar, you know, for the Empire. This is basically, you know, the guy who's head of the church, basically called a crusade against Mordheim. He said, go forth and finish Sigmar's work. Finish destroying the vile inhabitants of Mordheim. Because if you remember, Mordheim is basically, you know... They got to the point where they were sinning left and right. I'm pretty sure what, what, what's on that list. Let's see. Well, the human mercenaries have a warlock, so he should be killed. Um, let's see, worshippers of dark gods. That fits the bill. And if you can tell from all the crazy partying that they were doing, the corrupting music fits right in. That's pretty much, you know, what they should have been doing in the first place, but now it's official... There's a crusade against Mordheim, so all of the witch hunters are gathering together to go into Mordheim and basically purge it of everything that is basically wrong. So, pretty much, they might as well just set the entire city on fire, because, you know, you've seen the weird eyes and crap. So, let's get into the actual, you know, Mordheim unit, how they look. I still don't know about Warhounds, but we'll talk about that when we get to them. First off, there is the Witch Hunter Captain. Driven by fanaticism, Witch Hunter Captains are obsessed with cleansing Mordheim and bringing justice of Sigmar to all, carrying the edict of the Grand Theonist himself. They have the divine right to judge and execute warlocks, witches, chaos worshippers, in fact, all who dare oppose them. That's scary. All who dare oppose them. So if I just say, hey, bro, you did not, you know, pay for that bread you were currently eating, and he calls me a witch, and then says, kill me, he, he could probably, you know, get away with that, because no one's probably going to challenge a witch hunter who has the right to basically say you're a witch, and then set you on fire. 
they're like I said before they're needed it's just kind of crazy so the thing about this uh, the witch hunter captain is that they're pretty strong like they're basic human level mercenary they're probably going to be what captain level strong they're going to be able to use handguns swords great weapons all that jazz I would probably be allow them to use bows too now there's an interesting special rule that this guy has a witch hunter captain hates all models who can cast spells cool so that would be actually a very very interesting ability for the witch hunter to have maybe you know he'll be able to shout burn the witch at let's say a what gracier you know what I mean and then everyone has a boost to hitting the gracier it could be five it could be ten percent which really is a lot in more time it really helps and if you get that bonus hey the witch is going to die a heck of a lot faster that's pretty much the only thing that I really think would be very very fo very very good for them maybe they'd be able to use some of these sisters of Sigmar weapons but I think we'll probably save that for the warrior priest now the hero unit is most the first hero unit is most likely going to be a witch hunter now this is a witch hunter who's lower on the rungs who is not as seasoned as the captain witch hunter they're a little less strong they're not really that skilled it would be interesting if they didn't have burn the witch but they could pick it up later or maybe an ability that had something to do with messing with an opponent's magic that'd be nice and I can't see any reason that they wouldn't be able to use the exact same weapons as the witch hunter captain actually you know what maybe we don't allow them to say use what bows great weapons something along those lines maybe just maybe but then again the the young blood for the mercenaries can use pretty much everything so I can't understand why the normal witch hunter wouldn't I think just make them exactly like the young blood except don't give them the burn the witch ability they have not earned that yet even though in the official like PDF rulebook army list whatever they did have burn the witch let's just take that away from them for right now now here's the cool thing the next hero unit is the warrior priest of Sigma many powerful fighting men have come from the ranks of the faithful the priests of Sigma are no exception and the military wing of the cult is feared and respected throughout the Empire the Grand Theonist himself has granted the warrior priest an edict to cleanse Mordheim with burning fi with fire burning in their eyes the warrior priest stride into battle chanting aloud the Deus Sigma the praise of the patron god of the Empire so I really like the warrior priests I feel like they should behave exactly like you know some of the sisters of Sigmar models I don't know if they're going to have the exact same you know priest spells maybe throw them a little something different maybe not but I would like to see them kind of equipped similarly to the um, sisters of Sigmar you know the flails maybe this is one of the few units that can actually use one of those damn things that would be nice and pretty much sisters of Sigmar stat line I'm not exactly sure who their equivalent of the warrior priest would be I really don't play sisters of Sigmar but I would definitely enjoy this character being you know another priest in Warhammer considering the fact that there really is only the Sisters of Sigmar who have priests everyone else has wizards and there's a very very big distinction between the two you know what I mean the wizard prays to the wizard takes in chaos energy makes a fireball goes poof and bad things could happen now the, sis the Sisters of Sigmar pray to Sigmar then they get their power and then bang Another very, very interesting fact I would like to read for you right now that I'm on the topic of the Sisters of Sigmar. Now, where is it? Ah, uh, yes. The um, actual witch hunters, and I quote, believe that the so-called Sisters of Sigmar are loathsome demon-worshipping she-heretics. Yeah, that was, that was close to profanity. 
I'm watching you, Witch Hunters. But I'm very interested as to why, you know, they believe this. I would like to see in some type of story mission that the reason as to why the Sisters of Sigmar aren't exactly thought of as the true faithful of Sigmar. Considering, you know, that someone can call forth a comment of Sigmar, I pretty much would, like, get on my knees right there and just start praying. You know what I mean? So it could just be that they don't follow the Grand Theignus, um opinions. Hmm. If anyone knows, actually hit me up in the comments about that. It's kind of interesting. Now, see, here's where we have an issue. That's, that's pretty much it for their heroes in the army book. And as you know, you usually get a couple hero characters. So I'm going to say this right now. Here's what I'm thinking. You know, since they're all about burning the heretics, burning, you know, evil magic users, you know, why don't we just give them, you know, a wizard? You know, lore fire, it'd all work out, it'd be cool, they'd be there side by side, burning things with the witch hunters, it would be awesome. It would also be heretical. No, that's not going down. To tell you the truth, I am thinking that they could always get a priest of more. What? Wh what do you mean you don't know who more is? All you know is Sigmar? Okay, here's the thing about the Empire, ladies and gentlemen. There are other gods in the Empire outside of Sigmar. He's the head. Pretty much everybody worships Sigmar, but he's not the only god to be worshipped in the Empire. And they actually do allow the worshipping of other gods. Look at the Knights of the Blazing Sun. They apparently worship a warrior goddess who saved some of their members by having her actual, you know, statue fall on people who were trying to kill them. That was their sign, and they prayed her. And everyone in, you know, the Empire kind of looks at them a little weird, thinks that they're kind of crazy, but they have proven time and time again that they are not daemon worshippers, they're not evil, they're not going to, you know, backstab someone. They just follow another god, but they are completely loyal to the Empire and to Sigmar. More is basically all about, well, death. And to tell you the truth, in a world where MFers are just popping out of graves left and right, you know, that's kind of important to have the god of death put them back in their graves. There's basically a group of people who are dedicated to more. There are knights. It's an order kind of like the Blazing Sun that, you know, that actually go out to take down zombies, banshees, all those types of people. So a priest of more would be very, very similar to the warrior priest, except, you know, maybe not as focused on physical battle, but has certain spells that either bolster people's, you know, morale, makes them unafraid, let's say, you know, in the face of a fear-causing unit, or, better yet, they have special abilities that take out, you know, zombies, skeletons, vampires, the whole shebang, and maybe some things against chaos, and maybe even something crazy that might be very, very useful against, oh, I don't know, Skaven. I know the last one sounds a little bit crazy, but it'd be nice if we could have, you know, an actual Priest of more in the game. Now, for those of you who think that a Priest of more would be freaking stupid, we could also have the, ver the variant that are the Knights essentially of more. I'm forgetting their name right now. I believe it's like the death. It's not the death guard. Actually, it is the Knights of more. So here's, let me paint a picture for you. You have a bunch of dudes riding deathly silent in black armor on steeds, not making a sound on some of their helmets. You can see the face of a skeleton. And as they ride up to meet their foes, they wield these crazy scythes and they start just chopping people's heads off. Man, I really like these guys. They're quiet, they're silent, and they would actually provide a much needed, like, 
heavy combat unit to the witch hunters. Their basic job is, as I said before, they, they follow more. They basically go hunt any vampire, anything that should be dead, and put it back in its place. The cool thing about them, from what I've read, from what I've heard, is the fact that they will use different tools. Like, they just won't use the cool sides that they have. They will use, like, a, a shield and a spear if they need, you know, a shield to keep something away, maybe a zombie from biting their neck or, you know, just getting overwhelmed, and a spear to keep people back. They will adapt their weapons to, you know, the enemy that they're facing. I think that that's really cool, and maybe you could give them some type of buff to, you know, when they sneak up on somebody, maybe more damage. I think that'd be really cool, because every once in a while there's that thing that pops up when you've attacked someone, it's like, oh, they were surprised. Well, if you get surprised by a knight of more, you're going to be decapitated in a few seconds. That's why I think these guys are really cool. They're interesting, they're flavorful, they can basically use any weapon in the game, and hey, I can see this happening. You know, a witch hunter is going to go into more time, and they're like, hey, you're a knight of more, right? And then the knight of more says nothing. And it's just like, oh, well, uh, you know, we're, we're just going to go kill the vampires and the various heretics over there. And then as soon as, you know, the witch hunter says vampires, the knight of more just silently walks in that direction. All stoic and scary and shit. So now that we've gone over, you know, the hero units that I kind of want to pop up, that I kind of want to see, you know, go down, we're going to talk about the henchmen. We only got two henchmen. You know this, I know this. We all know this. Two henchmen. So, first we will go over the flagellants. The flagellants are fanatics and madmen obsessed with the end of the world. They are often men who have lost their families to war or the ravages of nature, and have lo also lost their minds with insane persistence. They travel the length and breadth of the Empire, preaching their view of the end of the world! With their arousing speeches, witch hunters can muster these dangerous lunatics to fight in the streets where no sane man would dare go. The cool thing about, um... Flagellants is, I would love for their special rule to come into place. They, they're, they're crazy. There is nothing that will scare them. They have seen so much just shit in their lives that they, they stopped caring. Oh, that's a manticore? I don't care. I'm going to go charge it. That's, you know, a vampire? I don't care. That's a greater daemon of corn? I don't care. They will just go in and be crazy. Another cool thing about flagellants, from what I remember, is, well, self-flagellation, you know. There's always, like, the idea of a priest who sits down and maybe takes their shirt off and, you know, grabs, like, some type of flail-ish instrument and whoosh, 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 starts whipping their back as an act of, you know, kind of like meditation. Flagellants do that on a daily basis. They would be very, very tough, very, very strong, and I would like to see one just go crazy and attack. Maybe pick up Frenzy. I would also like to see them maybe have some type of state where they take less damage. You know what I mean? Fla flagellant state, self-flagellation. Every time you get hit, that increases your defense or something. I know it sounds crazy, but I'd like to see it. Also, now that we're talking about them, if the Knights of Moor, you know, don't pop up, I would like to see maybe an Arco Flagellant, who might have, you know, just a little bit more of his skin missing than the others, maybe a couple more piercings than the others, and he would just be a crazy unit that would get in, do as much damage as possible, kind of like the Black Skaven and then probably die very, very quick. He'd be awesome, probably have the same things I was telling you about, and be completely immune to fear. Now we have the kind of, 
I, I guess you could say the everyman here. That would be the zealot. So these guys would actually use... I'm thinking they wouldn't be able to use... Eh, they'd probably be able to use two-handed weapons. They wouldn't be able to use guns, though. They'd be stuck straight to either bows or short bows. And zealots. When a man loses his family, home, and all he cared about for, religion is often the last refuge left to him. Such men become wandering pilgrims, bitter and dangerous fanatics, who are prepared to avenge their lost at any cost. These men are called zealots. Yeah, they're basically the stock and file. Not, not, goon? Okay, yeah, witch hunter goon. They believe in the witch hunter, they believe in the warrior priest. They're not as crazy as the flagellants, but they will go into crazy places and follow these guys into, well, really, the jaws of more time. They're not really going to be that special, but they're going to be a unit that could do more than, say, the flagellants, who I'm pretty sure will not be able to use any type of ranged weaponry. So the zealots would be able to bring in bows and be able to switch off while the fl while the flagellants are basically just shock troops. They're just damage. Now, let's get into the one thing that I'm wondering about. That'd be the warhounds. See, witch hunters often keep packs of ferocious hunting dogs. With their huge jaws and powerful bite, they are perfect for hunting down and, you know, tearing apart any heretics, mutants, deviants, and witches. Yeah, they're, they're pretty scary. The Warhounds don't cost a lot, but they have incredibly high movements, and well, you know, it's not fun to have a giant dog bred, you know, for combat to bite your throat. I'm really not sure if they're actually going to be put in the game, like I was talking about the zombie dogs, with the vampires, I don't think that they're going to be put in either, but if they are put in, it'd be pretty cool. I'd like it. And, hmm. And it'd be fun. I also want to name one like Spike for some crazy reason. Now, that is basically how I think the Witch Hunter faction look in more time. City of the Damned. Please tell me what you guys think in the comments down below. If you like the video, please like. If you're against heresy, please like. <laughs> Have a nice day, everybody. JB Illusion, peace out.